Well, welcome all. Thank you for opening up me. I greatly apologize. I try not to be late, but I apologize again. So the title of this course is 3D Printing and Media Dentures. Um, the goal of this course, you can hit the next slide. The goal of this course is just learn basic techniques to 3D print dentures efficiently and cheaply in the office. And I say efficiently and cheaply because, you know, if we can't do them efficiently, you're not going to do it in your office. And you can't do it cheaply, why are you going to do it in your office? You know, um, if you can't do it, in my mind, if you can't do these things quick and cheap, you might as well send it to a lab because then you're not really saving any time at all. Next slide. You know, um, I'm going to go over the benefits of why we're going to print them, why we're going to print immediate dentures. Um, I'm going to kind of talk about a technique that I think the printed dentures really allow for, which is the one month printed dentures, the one month healing dentures, which I think is really good. Um, and I think that kind of one thing I've kind of added since I started the started this is, you know, what do we need to make 3D printed dentures and what do I do in my, my office? Because that's what people really want to know. Um, and then I've got a video of how I make um, immediate dentures and a uh, mic that's actually my, uh, that's actually on my, um, that's actually another video on the, uh, the Google Drive as well that you can pull, you can download. But I've got one, how I use an immediate denture to make a one month healing denture and go through that. That's about a 20 minute video there. Um, you can download that. That's that um, second thing right there. Um, and then um, next slide. So this is my immediate denture philosophy. Next slide. You know, we first want to get that infection out ASAP, get the smile back and meet quickly, and then let them experience a denture prior to any implant placement. You know, I kind of want patients to suffer just a little bit. I think too often we put patients to implants. We don't let them experience like how crappy a denture really is. Um, you know, patients go from teeth to an all on six or all on four or whatever. They don't quite get to suffer a little bit. You make them experience what a denture actually is like. Make them experience having the teeth out of their mouth. Next slide. And uh, why do a printed denture immediately? And, you know, and my philosophy kind of goes like this. Uh, next slide. You know, I like to think of everything as faster, cheaper, better. So why is it faster? Next slide. You know, it's, it's faster because I can do it anywhere from a day and a week. You know, these patients come in pretty afraid that, you know, they've not seen a dentist for years. And if you can say, hey, I can get this back to you in a week, they're like, oh, oh, really? People want things tomorrow or, or it's the Amazon culture, you know, and love it or hate it. People want things tomorrow and we can do these cheaply. I can print out an arch for 25 to 50 bucks. That's phenomenal. You know, like I, I love my lab, Tim Lane, and he's 400 bucks for this better. And it's nice when patients can do this stuff, you know, later on, they can afford like a nice prosthetic from Tim, you know, for a high fright fee later on. I charge about half the cost for my immediates that I do for my finals. And that's a really good win-win for everybody here. Next slide. You know, this is a patient we're gonna be working with today. This is a patient came to see me early in January. She wants a whole new smile and you can see why her teeth look terrible and she's ashamed of that smile. And that's, that makes sense. That looks awful. Next slide. So we made this denture for her in a week. This is a monolithic uh, printer out of Accurate Acura resin. Um, I kind of made this one last minute. I, I should have spent a little more time polishing it, but we printed it monolithically. I glazed it with a GC Opti glaze. We used a gingiva colors for the uh, for the gingiva, and we just used clear resin for the uh, for the teeth. Doesn't look perfect, but it kind of works. Uh, next slide. You know, you can see in the mouth it looks okay. Doesn't look perfect, but it looks okay, and that fits really nicely. Next slide. So the challenges of this case, though, was that everything's just kind of jacked up, for lack of a better word. I mean, you can see that all the we had to take out 16 teeth, including you know some impacted uh, wisdom teeth. She's got so much compensatory eruption. I mean, you can even imagine, even in the hands of a really good lab tech. I mean, no matter how good you make this look with an upper denture, lower partial, there is no way to make this you know a good upper denture, lower partial is going to survive for six months and look good. Um, so like, no matter what you're doing, you know, after one month of healing, look what we get. We get, you know, some really nice arches that you can build an upper denture, lower partial around this that looks nice. And so that's why I really like the one month healing denture. So why do I like the one month healing denture? Because we get something that's all three of these things, better, faster, and cheaper. I mean, I, I do this for her and we don't need any adjustments or relines anymore. She's just doing good. Like if we go to the next slide, like, um, like let's go to the next slide here. Oh, sorry, let me show you how we take records here because this is just so easy. All we really have to do here is just, you know, we take a fit, we just reline the immediate denture with some light body PBS. I scan the intaglio and the denture teeth extra orally. I scan the opposing arch. Um, we just take a bite, you know, um, intra orally. So we get all the, all the jaw relations perfectly. And from there I can make a denture. 
So next slide. And that's just so easy. You know, now one thing I like to say to people is if we go down this process, don't do these for high demand patients. You know, um, every now and then I'll get a patient that comes on in, they really want things to be perfect. So I'll make them a, you know, cheap immediate denture, but the one month mark, I'll, they'll say, I, I, I want something that's really nice. I'll be like, that's fine. So this next patient that comes on in, uh, let's go to the next slide real quick here. He came in literally telling me, I want Steve Harvey teeth. This patient wanted 010 teeth. And when they tell me that, I just, I don't make printed denture for them. I charge them, charge them a full, full FE. I charge about $4,500 for a set of dentures. So I made him a one month healing set and I charged him 4,500 bucks for it. You know, and he gladly paid it for me, but I gave him Steve Harvey teeth and he wanted Steve Harvey teeth and he was happy. Um, and I charged him for it, but when patients want high end, you, you don't do printed dentures. It's a nightmare. So that's my biggest thing is make sure you can read the patient. When patients want high end, don't do printed. My only caveat. Uh, next slide. So one of the biggest questions here is when do we monolithic versus two piece? I recommend we start with monolithic if you don't quite know what to do. It's faster, it's easier to print. You need to stain, so it takes a little bit of time. Um, it does take some more work to polish just because it is a harder material I find, um, but it's just easier overall. They're, you don't need to do as much stuff. I like the two pieces because I find they're, they are easier to make together. You know, it's, it's hard to make it look pretty, but it does take a little bit more work. You kind of need to know the materials a little bit more. Um, you know, how do you put things together? It takes a little, just, it makes it a little bit more of a mess. Um, you know, just my thoughts on it, honestly. But I say start out with monolithic, move to two pieces after you have a little bit more experience with it. Um, but that's my philosophy on it. Next slide. You know, so kind of what I say in my office, what I do is I'll do immediates or all monolithic, unless something is going on that's kind of strange. Almost all my one month entries are two piece. Again, unless something is going on kind of strange, or I got a patient that's like maybe a really, if I got like a patient that's really a bruxer that's destroying everything. Yeah, then I'll make my one month a uh, monolithic. Or if I've got a patient with a very high smile line um, for my immediates, then I might make a, um, a two piece for my immediate denture. That might be kind of my, you know, give or take there. So that's kind of how I judge it. Um, but anyway, just some kind of rules of thumb in my office. Next slide. The equipment I use, because this is kind of my thoughts. I, I actually like Blue Sky Plan. I'm sure you probably figure that. I own ExoCAD, I use a uh, three shape. Uh, Blue Sky Plant, what I like, I like is low cost, and I find it easy to use. Honestly, I can I can train anybody who's a dentist who knows how to use computers vaguely how to use Blue Sky Plant within about an hour or two hours. I, I get I routinely get people who take my class um, within within about four hours knowing how to set teeth on a denture. It's so easy to do. Only trick is make sure you buy a decently powerful laptop. As long as you buy the laptop uh, that has the specs that Blue Sky Bio recommends, you will not be disappointed. Um, it's an easy program to buy. I mean, it's an easy program to use, and I just love it. It's, I don't know how to describe it. Like, if you start playing with Blue Sky Bio, then go to, if you go to ExoCAD or 3Shape, I don't understand why the other programs are so much harder to use. But that's just, that's my own opinion on it. Um, next slide. Um, I like my, I got a Medit i500. I love it. I know it's an older generation. Um, my, my philosophy is that I'll, I will scan patients intraorally if they're dentate. Um, if someone's a dentalist, I don't scan them intraorally. It's a pain in the butt. I will scan models. I like, I love alternate. I love PBS in my office. And this is something I often take with them. You know, I'll, I will scan um, bites. You know, I will uh, do my own bite rims. And this is sort of a, a general model I'll take on somebody. Um, I use Accureta. I like them a lot because, um, next slide. I like them a lot because they're low cost. I like the open sourceness of them. You know, they, they work with whatever resin is given to them. And they have good support, honestly. I've had a lot of success with them. Um, but it looks like like small foot printer. Uh, there's kind of two main resins I use in my office. I like Accurate Acuro a lot. That's Accurate's house brand. Um, I like their Crown and Bridge resin. Um, it's a pretty resin. It's a it's a it's a pretty resin. I like them a lot for my RPDs a lot. It has a little bit of flex to it. They don't seem to break that much on me. Um, I also like their denture resin a lot. The reason I like their denture resin is that it really plays nice with a lot of reline materials. So. If sometimes you have dentures that break on you or they chip, you can actually really easily repair them with jet, uh, with jet acrylic or um, Lusitan 199 uh, repair acrylic. Um, the other brand I like a lot is Pactent. I like Pactent a lot because it's actually a pretty low cost resin. It's about the same cost as the Accurate Acuro brand. Um, 
their sculpture is actually one of my favorite resins as well. I like the uh, Pactant sculpture resin. Um, the Rodan sculpture is really good. That actually meets this all ceramic crown definition for D2740. So if you wanted to print crowns in your office, this is a great this is a great resin. Honestly, it prints crowns. I've done a couple myself. I don't I'm not all in on the printed crowns just yet, just because I don't. Well, I just want to give it maybe a year or so before I go all in on it. But I've done about maybe a dozen or so, and so far they held up at the six month one year mark pretty darn well. Um, it stains well. I use optically to stain it. Um, I cement it kind of like you would cement a a um, you know an Emacs crown. It takes a little bit of work, but so far I've had some good success on premolars. Honestly, uh, next one. Um, I also like their denture material a lot. Their denture material looks really pretty. Um, the um, biggest issue, the denture material, it doesn't play nice with reline material. That's why I don't use it for everything. It's hard to repair. It's hard to reline. They're coming out with a version two that supposedly will play nicer with that, but man, it looks pretty. That's why I like it. So that's kind of the ones I use. And glazes, I like OptiGlaze. Um, I've been using that one for about a couple years now. Looks really pretty. I would, the first coat is clear. That looks really nice. I apply to everything, including the teeth. And then the second coat I'll um, put on there will be a combination of a uh, red, pink, and clear. That's the next slide for the gums. Oh, sorry, I would, I'll do a I'll cure it. Actually, the, so OptiGlaze actually has a curing oven. I don't buy it but because it's kind of expensive. But the second coat will actually be a uh, one part clear, one part red, and one part pink. And I'll kind of just brush it on the gums, maybe put one or two coats of it on there, cure it with the Velo curing light again, or you can use whatever curing light you have. Um, and I learned that from uh, Mr. Eugene Roizen, uh, Gert, uh, denture tech I follow on Facebook, just phenomenal guy. And that, it doesn't look perfect, but it looks pretty good. And then I can cure it again. And, and if you don't like the way it turns out, just kind of cut it off with a uh, ceramic burr, cut off with a uh, lab handpiece, and you get a pretty darn good result, honestly. So that's, that's kind of my recommendation. So next I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go through a video I did earlier. Uh, this is using uh, the last version of uh, Blue Sky Plan, where I make a uh, upper denture, lower partial for a patient um, from an impression we did from that patient we just saw. So and I'll, kind of, I'll kind of narrate along the way. So first we're going to import the models here. So what we have here is we have a scan of the impression of the upper denture and the lower partial, and the scan of the and scan of the um, um, lower models. First, what we're going to do is we're going to align the mandible. And the reason we align the mandible here is because that's one's um, not the impression, that's actual model here. I use the edentulus because the posterior teeth are missing. And what I want to do first here is I want to kind of cut away everything that's not the intaglio here. So I, I use model edit. I use the select brush function and I hold down shift and hold down the left mouse button. And I kind of just select everything that's not the impression here. I go around and just select everything. And what I'm doing the whole time, I'm making sure that I'm not selecting anything that's the impression material. If I select anything, I'll hit Control Z just to you know, undo what I did. Not a big deal. Control Z is my, your best friend of the stuff. And I just cut. So I remove everything there, and then I'm kind of removing whatever I don't like, and again, cutting. And like I said, if you remove something you don't like, just control Z it. Next, I want to find those like little floating islands, I call them. And I'm using the lasso tool that's under the surface tab on the right side under the panels. The panels can be found at the top, up there on the top of the, um, um, what do you call it, the menu. And the surface, you, you, hit, you click on the model, uh, that you want to cut and then you cut the cut function and you lasso whatever you want to remove and it have removes it tried, have you tried the isolate button i have tried it i just like this is kind of the way that i do it you know this is just kind of what you know you i think the the hard part about everything is you kind of do one thing that works in your hands 
and you kind of stick with it. But there's many ways of doing this. Um, and I'm sure there's better ways. It's just kind of the way that I've learned how to do it, the way I've kind of taught myself. Um, but next, what you do is you, I like to find the holes in the model. You select holes manually. And then you just close them. So, but um, uh, Michael, if you, have, if you have a better way of doing it, please, please show everyone because I, I, I could certainly be doing it the wrong way. No, oh, can you, can I, the, if the you, goal of the isolate button is that you click on what you want to keep and everything else disappears. Oh, perfect. In this particular application, and maybe this way is a more efficient and effective way of doing it, but I was just wondering because that might be a little bit of a shortcut. That might be. And, and actually, if you, can pause, you pause at the right spot right there. So go, go back just a little bit right there because I want to go through one more thing. Um, yes, yeah, so, so then can you... Um, I didn't. I did not know about that isolate function. I've never used it before. Um, but yeah, then I'll look at the isolate function. I'll post some on that later on because I was not familiar with that function. I guess you know I've learned. You learn one way of doing stuff. You don't kind of question it. Um, but one part here that I like to emphasize is that. So right now we've got to swap the face orientation because um, one thing with this model right here, with the impression, we have, the way the impression's working, is that we have kind of the reverse of the model here. So we have the impression, the, the side that we want to get to is the reverse side. Um, and maybe there's a better way of doing a blue sky plan, but the way I always do it is I want to export this model, but swap the face orientation of it so that we're working with the opposite side of the impression. And so what, I'll, what I'm about to do next is I'm about to export the model and call it a model repair, but I'll swap the face orientation so it's, it's the exact opposite side. And I'm about to show it in about five, 10 minutes about why I do that. And I'll explain it, but keep on going here. Hit play again. So I export this model, hit swap face orientation, and I'll call it model repair or max repair or max swap. I import that max repair, max swap back right back in. It's already in the right orientation. And now I'm put teeth on there. I like the Mitch Hurst flat anatomy library. I'll generally not include the, the second molders just because they're not very useful. Hold down shift and I like to place those eight and eight, I'll place tooth number eight right where I think it should be. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of set eight and nine where I think they should be at first. You know, trying to set their position kind of on the X, X Y, Z axis, their position in space. And then also after I position them kind of in the XYZ position, I'll put in the right, um, you know, kind of pitch, yaw and cant or whatever, you know, the rotation they should be in. And this, if you set them in the right position, everything else goes so much faster afterwards. So you can, you really want to spend quite a bit of time getting eight and nine lined up because if you do that, everything else moves so much faster for the rest of it. And I'm really using um, 24 and 25 to guide everything here. Now the big arrows move the whole tooth chain. The small arrows will kind of move the center of the tooth chain just a little bit as needed. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm hiding the maxillary models just so I can kind of compare it to the mandibular ones. I do the show hide tooth chain and I'll lock eight, nine, 24 and 25 so I can start moving teeth um, facially and buckly. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of move pieces as an arch um, from mesial distally. So I lock both arches and I grab the most mesial tooth. In this case, this would be 10, 11. Sorry, I grabbed number 10 and I'm moving it just slightly facially just to try to move things just a little more buckly almost. So they kind of flow with the arch because I'm trying to make it so that everything's kind of going right over the arch. In this case, I'm trying to make it go right over the mandibular arch. Same with number seven here. We're gonna kind of grab number seven, hold down shift, and try to pull it just slightly facially, slightly buckly. So everything's kind of flowing right over the arch right there. And we're gonna just check it right here. And I'm seeing right here, let's see, what do I see? I see I kind of like that, that's looking good. Good, I'm unlocking it, I'm locking the canine. And I'm gonna kind of pull those, looks like I'm pull those a little more lingually right now, a little more palatally from number um, five. And that'll pull all the teeth uh, distal to five, a little more uh, palatally or a little more lingually as well. 
So perfect, I like that, because that's creating it right over the retromolar pad where I want it to be at. And let's see, I'm gonna do the same thing over there. I'm gonna lock number 11 and lock number 22 and pull number 11, pull, sorry, pull number 12 and move those a little bit more palatably. Perfect, just like that. Good, I like that a lot right there. Let's see if I do anything else. Good. Now I'm gonna take a look and compare it to like what the models look like right there. Cause I wanna make sure they're still going over the ridge of the maxilla. Cause if they weren't going over the ridge of the maxilla, I would probably wanna um, change things up there. Now, one thing I like to do a lot of times, I will save, I like to save cases all the time, um, especially doing any CAD CAM design, CAD design at all, save file, save early, save often, because computers have a nasty habit of crashing and nothing stinks more when you've spent five minutes or 50 minutes working on a project and it just decide, the computer just decides to freeze on your crash. Um, the good Lord knows how many times I've lost a file after spending a lot of time on it and it makes you want to cry. So I'll go back again. I'm gonna reposition eight, nine, just because I don't like my overbite over jet. And I'm gonna kind of minimize those just a little bit. Um, the patient's kind of got a little bit of an anterior open bite just from what I had beforehand. So I'm gonna uh, get rid of that. And now what I'm doing, so I'm gonna make her a lower RPT. I'm removing all of the teeth that I don't like. Um, I had them in the first place just so I could, I had them, her lower front teeth in the first place on the denture, just so I can line everything else up really nicely, but I don't need them anymore. So I'm hiding them all. And what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to delete them all. Sorry, I'm not going to delete them. I'm actually going to move all the other teeth in the right spot. Now I'm going to delete the ones that I don't need, just because I don't need them anymore. And I delete the ones that are invisible. And now I'm going to take those hidden teeth. Sorry, not the hidden teeth, but the remaining teeth on the bottom. And I move them. Now when I move individual teeth, I like to lock everything else. So I just go to the panel for tooth surfaces, lock everything, and then unlock individual teeth. I will right click on the teeth, unlock them, and then just literally move them as needed. And what I'll do a lot of times, I'll right click on the surfaces, tog toggle transparency, toggle visibility, and you can start moving things very quickly. So I'm a big fan of just like going to the tooth surfaces and locking things transparent, making things transparent, making things visible. And this lets you move things very quickly wherever you are. And you can see right here, um, just how quickly I'm able to move. It does take a lot of practice to get to this point right here. I don't recommend that um, most people who are beginning with the software start doing this. It takes a bit of practice because you can get lost very quickly in the weeds with it. Um, but this is usually the last step that I'll do just because it does take the longest. Um, do not start here, like do all the big movements first because if you start here with the with these movements, before you do all the bigger movements, like the position eight and nine, like moving the tooth chain, um, it gets very complicated very quick and you will get not a very good result in the end. And so what I'm pretty much doing is trying to make sure everything looks kind of nice, trying to put things in occlusion, try to take other things kind of a little bit out of occlusion. And then last but not least, I'm kind of checking to see what's going to be going through the model right there. So next what I do is I'll go into the crown module here. And I'm going to actually try to cut back whatever is showing through on that lower model. And the way I do it is that I unlock the teeth. And then I just kind of just cut back by going to the tooth edit panel. And there's a little add remove material. I'll hold down control and just kind of just hold down control, hold on le the left mouse button, and you can just delete from there. Go back to the denture panel. Then you have to mark the teeth for tooth chain again. And now pause it for a second here, if you can. So what we did right here is this kind of goes back to why we have to swap the face orientation. Um, right now we're using the original model that we cut back. Um, from the denture impression. What you can see right now is that the model is given, this is where we're trying to create the denture itself. You can see we're getting an all black model, which is the software telling us, hey, something's not right here. Um, we're thinking it's thinking it's got to block all that out. Well, that's because it's thinking that 
the service we want to work on is the exact office service. It's the underside of the denture. And so if we try to work on the surface right here, the software would kick us back something that would not be correct. Um, and I show that just so you can see the error right here. So if you see this happen right here, um, that means you've got a surface that you need to swap. And I just like to point that out everyone because that's a mistake I made early on. I just like to point out this is a common mistake that happens, especially if you go through this process. Um, and I just like to point out to everyone. So hit play again, please. So and you can see from, let's see, I've got from the underside here. You can see if you hit from the underside right there, it'll give you the correct surface that the software thinks this is the correct surface to work on. Anyway, just like point that out. We'll go back to the right surface here, which is the max swap model. And we'll go through, the, system, we'll go through the, the right process this time. And you can see what it should look like. So we go back to creating the uh, top denture, plan new denture. And I always like a big undercut. I like a 0.5 undercut. I find it works pretty well. I'd rather something be too tight than not tight enough. Try to find something that looks, you know, pretty good, not blocked out. I know some people have very strong opinions about um, posterior palatal seals. I still like them a lot. I always put them there. I can always cut them back. Um, you know, play with the play with the settings a little bit. Um, so I like them. You can cut them off. You don't need them. But those are the settings I like are about, you know, age zeros and one that kind of moves it up and forward, up and down a little bit. The thickness of it is 1.5, but that's just me. So do as you want. Now, this is the one part that can take the longest, just depending on what the software kicks out to you. So this was done on a little bit slower laptop that I had, but I cut away a lot. Now, the next part here, we're gonna start creating the base. The one recommendation I have from people create bases is to kind of do big, um, long uh, points. A lot of my, a lot of people when I train them, they wanna go like really, really small points, like between everything, just choose points, you know. Now, the last two points, when you go to connect them, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to just um, hold down the left mouse button. Hold, you have to hold on shift, hold the last mouse, mouse button and connect the last point to the first point. That's how you want to do it. This part can take a little while. I just edited it out probably about a, on my computer. It took about a minute and a half or so. Um, if you're going to do a computer, it takes maybe 10 seconds. Now we're going to smooth everything out. I like a really nice, smooth denture base. I know there's some people that spend a lot of time festooning. I don't festoon at all. I I like everything smooth. I've never had a patient who wants festooning. Patients don't care. Um, so I've never had a patient, I've never had a patient ask me for more festoon gums. And I would rather have things be way too polished than not polished enough. Um, so I'll make the tool size really um, wide. And usually I'll make the strength really big. I don't know why I didn't make the strength really big this time, but usually I will. Let's see if I got tired of doing it. So let's see if I decided to do it. Okay. Yep. And you can see how nice and smooth we get it. That's perfect. And this will make it just so much easier to process later on. Um, Now you will get these little edges at the very end of the um, denture right there. I don't get too excited about that. I literally will take a lab hand piece to it and we'll adjust it there. Now what I will do is I will actually like to have a, about a 0.5 undercut there, sorry, 0.5 millimeter um, thickness at the very least of the denture. The reason I like that is that that minimum thickness makes it really easy for, um, um, printing out. And that way it's just really easy to print out. It prints out nicely and it's easy to set the teeth on it. Now we're going to the lower partial real quick. Same thing, go to about 0.5. Now this one we're kind of um, playing with the software a little bit. Same deal though. Now this one right here, you might get a weird result sometimes just because the software is not 100% built for it, but sometimes it does a pretty good job, honestly, especially with the newer builds of it. I've had a lot more success than I used to have with it. And especially for a case like this, you really want a lower partial because if you don't put a lower partial on her, she's gonna gag all the time on it.
So, and we kind of do a little outline of a partial here. And for this first one, I wanted to kind of show you all what happens. Um, this first one, I'll give you a little sneak preview. It will be a failed partial. It actually won't do a design for us. And it wasn't on purpose I did, the, did this way, but sometimes it does fail. And when it fails, it does kind of a weird thing where it'll either show everything or it'll do like one little spot. Let's see how long it takes to get there. And you'll be able to see in a second that it got to one little point right there. Don't know why that happened. It just did that way. We go back and we do it one more time. So that happens, not a big deal. Just try it again. Just do the outline of a partial. Can I make a suggestion why that might be happening? I suspect it's probably happening just because they're trying to go through a, a free space. So it's probably doing. Yeah, I think if the node, if a node is is placed on the air. Yeah, I think that's probably what's happening right there. Right. If you make sure that the nodes are on the surface, then I then it should process as expected. Yeah. And now we want to smooth it all out for us here. I just want to show everyone that's that sometimes happens. If it happens, don't get just frustrated with it. Don't try to play with it. Just redo it because it's easy and free. And you'll see like these areas like that right there. Don't get excited about that. We'll go back and process that later on. And now when we go to make these um, partials like this, I'll print out my dentures in two pieces sometimes. I will only print out my dentures, my partials monolithically. Um, I know some guys who use Flexera a lot. They'll do like Flexera base and Flexera teeth. I don't do that just because I don't trust the the denture base materials to be strong enough for it, you know, to each their own. But I will only print out RPDs monolithically. That's just my experience with it. I don't, I think the Crown and Bridge stuff is not strong. I think the Crown and Bridge stuff is strong enough. I don't trust the denture base. But anyway, we'll go back to the model software. And we'll click on the denture base for that. And now we're just gonna kind of go back to surfaces and we're just gonna click on cut. And just go in there and just kind of just lop all that yuckiness off there. And we got ourselves a partial now. Perfect. I'll go back to the intro design. Now we go back to export everything here. If you want to export, so we go to export first. Now, I like to tell everyone, export whatever you see on the on the screen. That's what Blue Sky uh, Plan will export for you. So we want to export this. You're going to file, export. And that's, you know, half a credit right there. So that exports, you know, the denture base, which is all one model. And then I'm not going to export because I don't want to get charged for it, obviously. And then next, we're going to export. Let's see, do I do export the fin next? Yep, I'm gonna, this would be a two-piece one, so I export the denture fin, which would be the cutout. I'd be charged a half a credit for this one if I did. And then what I do next is I would export the denture teeth. So I'd select everything away except for the uh, reduced teeth. Just make sure all the teeth are there. Make sure they're all cut away. Hit file, export these little buggers. And I would not be charged export for that. And on a machine that's about three years old, it took me about 20 minutes to design these dentures. So I think that's not too bad. But um, hope that gave you a taste for how to make some some dentures out of some uh, teeth right there. You know, dentures out of some impressions from a scan from a, you know, I-500. And um, yeah, that's kind of my presentation. Next slide. And honestly, like um, Mike, Mike was talking about earlier, if you don't have anything to do doing this, use a lot pronto. Honestly, you know, it gets them back pretty quickly. There are a lot of really great designers who can do this stuff for you for not a large cost. And I think that, 
you know, even they do charge a bit of a cost for just the turnaround time. Um, even a fast lab is going to take two or three, four weeks to do this. But if you use lab pronto, you get the stuff back probably in a, maybe a couple of days, maybe a week or so. And printing it out is easy, you know? So I don't, I, I don't know, uh, Michael, what's the turnaround time of lab pronto anyway? I don't use it too often. That's, well, not for dentures at least. So generally across the board, I mean, it's give or take, but generally across the board, the digital design, if you're ordering a service that's just a design and then turnaround time is two business days, or let's say two to three business days. If you're ordering something that's just manufacturing, then turnaround time is usually three to four business days. And if you're outsourcing the entire case for the digital design plus the manufacturing, then it's around five business days. Yeah. So if you're, if you're, yeah, so a week. So pretty much, you know, scan case on Monday, have, have them come back next Wednesday and you can have everything done. I mean, that's pretty darn, that's easy stuff to do in my opinion. Um, yeah. yeah. We're actually offering just the design as well. So that's going to be going live probably today or tomorrow based on Dr. Schiffer's comments. So if somebody wants to get the design done, but wants to, you know, manufacture print in, in your office, you'll be able to do that as well. Perfect. Um, there are a few questions that came in during the presentation. Can I read them out to you? Of course. Okay. First of all, the first question that came in is regarding additional education. Where could people learn more from you? What kind of, oh, what could they learn about your that's, courses? That's the next slide. There we go. So I got, I got an online course, denturece.com. Um, I'm kind of adding more and more stuff. Like uh, I've got a couple of lectures I'm trying to, uh, the, the online stuff is mostly just my analog stuff, but I'm trying to add some small stuff kind of like we did today on it. Um, I've got a course with our, our friend Jason Lipscomb in Richmond, Virginia. I'm teaching with the Flying Dentists in Branson, Missouri sometime in July. And I'll do another course in New Orleans sometime probably in November, December of this year. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where you want to learn more. If you want to learn more. And also, if you follow me on Facebook, I'm usually pretty open about just talking about stuff because I... I consider Corey Glenn a mentor of mine, and he's pretty open about stuff, and I try to be pretty open about teaching this stuff too. So that's very, very much appreciated. Um, another question that came in: Any resins to recommend for Form Labs printer? Um, I know almost nothing about Form Labs printers at all. I know they make good quality stuff. I know I've I've yet to meet somebody who's talked poorly about them. So I would say if you're staying in the Form Labs ecosystem, I would say you're probably in pretty good shape, honestly. You know, um, I know Form Labs is pretty, from what little I know about them, I know that they're very, they're kind of like next in, the next in printer. So I would say just use the Form Lab stuff and you're probably in okay shape. You know, um, all of the resins I use, I've learned have a little bit different, it's kind of like using composite, if that makes sense, like, or bonding agent. All composites, all bonding agents work. Um, it just, each one has a little bit different feel to it, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so I'd say just buy one, put it in your printer, start playing with it and see how, what you feel with it. But okay. also, I guess I also remember too, that they all play nice. Everything plays nice to everything else to, to a certain extent, more or less. Okay. How do you check a uh, occlusion contact? Um, it's the denture. I don't worry about it too much. The dentures are all kind of, proprioception doesn't matter as much for dentures as you think it does. Um, this isn't fixed cases. Fixed cases that matter so much. But for dentures, you got so much playroom with it. Um, I hate to say I, I do so many dentures that I've kind of just developed a sixth sense for this all. But also, I kind of know how to read patients just a little bit. But I also kind of know how to BS patients just a little bit too to make them kind of understand what I'm, what I want to tell them. Um, but essentially, essentially, what you do is you kind of just, you kind of look at patients. I say bite down, tap, tap, tap. I don't even check with bite papers. And um, yeah, so yeah, that's how I do it, if that makes sense. So I, I kind of just, I kind of have a sixth sense for it, but I just tap, tap, tap with their mouth. If things sound correctly, if they look correctly, then it probably is correct. But then I say, usually wear it for a day or so. And as long as things don't look too are off, you're pretty much good. If you're worried about it, put some bite paper in there. I, I use a, a nice, thick, cheap horseshoe paper and have them bite into that and then grind from there. Okay, are you using any wires for retention or just, just using the just the base. Don't keep it simple. Um, with all these ones, a wire, I've tried that before. It is really hard to do. It makes, if you're going to start using wires, send it to a lab. You will spend so much extra time with it. It'll be a pain in the butt um, and you're going to waste time. Okay. Is it possible to design and print a full denture on implants? It is possible. I don't do it just because um, 
so, so I would do it if I was doing a fixed case. Yeah, uh, guys like uh, Dr. Corey Glenn or Dr. Danny Domain do that all the time. Those guys are um, those guys are much smarter than I am, and they do it all the time. But they're doing fixed stuff. I um, would not do it for movable stuff, and the reason is just because if someone's paying me that much money, I am going to do a traditional one just because I don't trust any of the resins to give me a fantastic end, end result. Um, you know, someone's paying me, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. I'm going to give them a traditional denture just because I still like that process so much more. I trust the material so much more, and I know it's going to work. So that's the way I look at it. Okay, I didn't see any cubic printers listed. Is it possible to use them? Uh, I don't have any experience with any cubic printers at all. I'm sure it's possible, um, but I know zero about them, honestly, other than they exist. So that's I couldn't give you a better answer. Uh, Dr. Wally Renee would probably have better opinions than I would have about that. Okay, from the case that you shared, will the lower RPD be served as a one-month denture as well? It would be. That's exactly what it would be right now. That's she actually is an. Uh, I literally just delivered that one-month RPD to her this morning, and she's loving it. Okay, is the technique you used for the denture similar to how you would design a temp for an all-on X? Uh, so I've literally done, I can count the number of AOX, all and X's I've done on one hand in my career. I cannot answer that question with any, I, I would imagine it'd be pretty similar, but man, don't rely on me for that question. I, I don't want to give you the wrong answer for it. So that'd be a better question for uh, Dr. Corey Glenn or Dr. Danny Domain. So hate to say, I don't know, but I really don't have a good answer for you. But I would okay. guess it'd be, I guess it'd be similar. Okay, just to use that as a plug for the upcoming webinars, we have Corey scheduled as well. Uh, he'll be giving a presentation. All the future webinars, the schedules at blueskybio.university forward slash webinars. Um, also, just to talk for a second regarding the costs from the Blue Sky plan side. So we're charging half of an export per jaw. So if it's an upper and lower case, then for one export credit, and you have both of the dentures um, done. If it's just one jaw, then it'll be half of an export credit. Okay, so uh, just to wrap things up a little bit, we're going to be sending the CE credits via email um, within a week or so. The presentation is being recorded, so it should be available online uh, probably tomorrow or a day or two later. So if anybody missed it or wants to watch it again, then you could go ahead and check it out on our social channels on our website, Blue Sky bio.university where you're centralizing all the relevant educational content there um, and for additional information regarding dr schaefer's upcoming courses you could also see that on blue sky bio.university or of course check out his website denturece.com perfect thank you all so much and again i greatly apologize for being late but uh thank you all for watching and if you have questions um i'm always on facebook and um thank you all again Okay, Dr. Schaefer, thank you so much. And everybody, thanks for attending. And we hope to see you at additional uh, upcoming webinar sessions.